Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Nikki. Hello, Pete. How are you today? It is a fine day. The sun is shining. The air is yes. crisp. It is fall. We have exactly <sighs> 27 more minutes before the rains come. I know. Yeah. We're, and we're just grim. like, for Oregonians, it's that's a big deal. Everybody go outside for 27 minutes. Oh, totally. Because are <laughs> just you going to make it. it? This October is the best month. Yeah, it's so beautiful here. Uh, for, and, and you'll notice, I, I'm, I'm kind of a fall. You know, once the beard comes out, the colors, everything just sort of, I, I go into the fall and I love it. It's yes. my favorite. It's my best sweatshirt month. And yes. then it, it's the race <laughs> to Halloween. Do you get a Halloween that isn't raining? And it's just a gamble right. every stinking year. So it is. It's a gamble. That's where for we sure. are. Uh, but it, we are. We are certainly uh, very lucky to have had a very mild fall compared to so many uh, others around the country, around the world, that are struggling with some incredible weather events. So, uh, yes. our thoughts to everybody, uh, in particular our own listeners who are struggling with weather events and the and and rebuilding. We are. Uh, our our hearts go out. Uh, it's it's been a tough season. Um, we are going to be talking about ADHD strategies in particular. How do you go about practicing your ADHD strategies? Lots to talk about there. Before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. Get to know us a bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list. And you get an email each week when a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take, at take Control ADHD. Uh, and you know what's great is Patreon. And let me tell you why. Patreon is a place where you can support us with a few bucks a month and get access to all kinds of great community features uh, in the ADHD community. And I'll tell you why these features are so great this morning, the things that I'm very excited about. Number one, uh, uh, community members are putting together a uh, a session where uh, many of us can get together and watch together in this tool called rabbit you know you put together this the you you put together like a netflix link or a youtube link and you can watch videos together in a community with a oh, community cool. chat it's very very cool and we're going to do that with some of the uh, adhd expo videos uh that have come up that were very uh, impactful to some of our community members so we're they're putting together this schedule for collaborative watching of ADHD. I am blown away by how cool that is. And I signed up That's immediately. Really cool. That's happening this week. You know what else we have now? Don't know if you knew this. What? We have a book group. I know. You know, we have a book I group? did see that. I, I, I didn't do it, but I signed up. You bet I did. I'm very oh, excited about that. The book group, uh, we, they put it up on uh, on um, uh, the uh, Goodreads. If you're a Goodreads fan, there's now a, a book ADHD book group that is managed through our Discord community, and you get access to that Discord community by way of becoming a patron. So uh, give it a shot. In addition to all the other stuff, like joining these live streams and being able to hang out and hear how Nikki loves crisscross and <laughs> she and loves to around. jump around. And uh, you get to hear yes. those kinds of things uh, in our live stream when we record this podcast each week. Uh, please consider supporting us. Uh, if any of those things, crisscross or anything else that we've said over the last eight years uh, on this podcast has, has moved you, has helped you learn in any way, shape or form, we would love to see you there in the book group, in the watch parties. They're great uh, at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Thank you so much. Okay. Nikki Kinzer. Wow. I'm so impressed how smoothly you get through that. Like, did, I don't even think you like even took one breath. You well, were just I, talking. I just talked. Is that too much? It was too much talking. I should have taken a break. No. You told me. I did I, too fast. No. And now I'm judging <laughs> myself. Thank you. I am not judging. I'm giving you a compliment. Well, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Awesome. I'm fueled. I'm Casey fueled Kaysen. by coffee and pumpkin bread this morning. That is my morning oh. treat, uh, and that's what helps ah. me get through long sentences. Is coffee. I love pumpkin bread. <laughs> pumpkin bread yeah. is the season. Pumpkin yeah. bread's my color. So, your let's, color. can we talk about it's your jam? Uh, <laughs> can we talk about <laughs> practicing ADHD strategies? I I, I want to hear first of all where this came from because we've been talking about uh, you know strategies and things over the last uh, a couple of weeks. Eight and, years. Also eight years, a couple of weeks and eight years. Uh, yes. Where did this come from? Well, this actually came from a client of mine who um, was trying to survive uh, one of the ADHD tele summits in the summer. 
And I say trying to survive because these telesummits are fantastic. There's all these experts that come and talk about subjects and they're usually, you know, depending on the telesummit or the expo or whatever it is that you've signed up for, it can be anywhere from like nine minutes to 15 minutes. They're usually pretty short. But you get a lot of information at once. You know, you get a lot of information on different topics at once and can, it can be extremely overwhelming. So we're talking about some of these things that she's learning and uh, she's she was just really confused. I don't even know what to do with this stuff. And I think a lot of people feel that way, probably after even listening to us. Right. Oh, right. oh great. Isn't it, <laughs> isn't it so ironic that these tools that are out there purportedly to help you end up definitely making things worse. Confusing. For a time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, so much that I want to have you and I at some point look at our like inventory of topics and how to even organize it better yeah, on right. the website because it is, it's very confusing and, uh, and, and overwhelming. So yes, people listening to, to podcasts, going to seminars, um, you know, reading blog posts, reading or not reading, but you know, those videos, those great videos from Rick Green, 80, you know, ADD and loving it, you know, mm -hmm. so much great information, but what do you do with it? Uh, sounds like a great idea. Makes sense. I'm going to do this later, but then you forget about it. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Until the challenge comes back. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, man, again. I know I had a strategy about that, but where did it go? So completely normal. And she had asked me if I had any kind of worksheet um, that might help her figure out how to practice a strategy. Well, at the time I didn't, but I was like, that is a great idea and I'm going to design one. <laughs> so I did it. I designed it for her. But now it's, you know, now I want to give it to the world because I think it's really, um, it, it's uh, not valuable, but it's. Um, well, valuable. Uh, Useful. Well, it's valuable and it's useful. Yeah, Thank you. Like this is useful. So a couple of things that we want to do here is we want to capture the information, but then we also have to practice the information that we capture. So let's talk about how to capture it first. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good. that's a tough one too. And I, I guess I, I just want to start with a with just just one point. Yes. For as somebody who often falls into the trap of I don't know how to do this thing. But the one thing that I do know how to do is listen to other people talk about this thing. So I'll just listen to a lot of other people talking about it. Right. That that's right. a trap. And you feel like yes. you're in control if you continue to engage in learning new stuff. And so I guess I just want to say, don't worry so much that you're not learning new stuff when you're in that mode, because at some level you are learning new stuff, even if you don't actively practice the skills of that that you're taking in or practicing the skills of capturing. You're you're getting something. So give yourself a, a little bit of a break. Don't don't feel bad about engaging in new material because that's a good thing. That's a really good yes. thing. So uh, that's Absolutely. that's just, you know. That's a very good point because I think that's so true. It's still it's still coming into yeah. you. It's still subconsciously there. And uh, and that's a really good point. Right. I like that. All right. So capture. Uh, well, capture. I mean, I think that one thing we can probably, at least most of us, agree on is that if you're capturing information that you're learning and you're putting it in different places, it's probably not a great strategy. It, it, it's going to be hard <laughs> to remember yeah, yeah. where is, you know, where did I put this down? Where did I write this? And was it from this record? I mean, you know, so we know that this doesn't work. So let's eliminate capturing things in different places create yourself your very own uh set of learning assets that are just one place whether it's a set of M Molsky notebooks or field notes or one evernote evernote journal or a notion journal like whatever you do make it the yes. one the one and true and holy book of learning for you yes and i'm gonna make and that's that all acronym. you gotta do yeah that's all you have to do is just ha capture it in one spot so that anytime you want to review what you've either learned in the past or you want to add to this because you found something new that you really want to try that really resonated with you, this is where you want to put it is into one spot. And I kind of call it like the ADHD toolbox, right? This is your toolbox. This is your personal policy manual of how to you know, get through daily life. I love that. 
Yeah. 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 I think it's great. So that's, that's it. I'm capturing. Just capture one place, one place. You get to choose what that looks like. Well, okay. So then I want to ask some questions then. And, okay. and that's around. <laughs> uh, so now let's just say you've, you're all in on capturing in one place. You have one Evernote journal or something. How do you, uh, or you one bullet journal? Let's say you have a nice, uh, Bujo going and now you have all this stuff in there, but also you have ADHD. Uh, and so even if it's all in one place, how on earth are you going to be able to find what you need when you need it? I'm really glad that you said that because I really, I did. I left off a really big, important thing here. And yeah, well, I'm, I'm the segwayer in chief. <laughs> so I'm really glad that you're here to see that. Uh, yes, we do have to probably somehow, uh, this is going to be a nasty word for some people, but categorize it in a way. Right. I mean, it, it because it will be really overwhelming to open up your bullet journal or your Evernote and seeing a bunch of stuff. I mm -hmm. mean, it, yes, it's all in the same spot, but it is definitely going to be overwhelming. So that is a piece I did forget. So thank you, Pete. Right. Well, I looked to start. <laughs> Yes. So I would say depending on what you choose, whether that is a binder, um, Evernote, bullet journal, whatever, I would say that you probably want to do some general categorizing. So if you're looking at ADHD tools, I mean, you know, you can separate time management and organizing. You can separate memory and um, social relationships or whatever, like you could start to kind of separate those things a little bit so that it's a little bit more broader and you can go in and find what you need. If you're using, uh, and you'll, you'll appreciate this. If you're using something that's more technical, use the tags. Yeah. That's easy, right? Well, you it tag is, it. it is easy to tag. I would also say, uh, one thing you can improve your skill on, one thing you can learn about, particularly in Evernote, is search. And, right. and I think that is, for me, the A, number one, Monday morning, day one skill that I use more often than anything else in these tools, both in Google, so Gmail and all the, the associated Google tools, but also in, in Evernote and, and Notion is how to run search effectively. Uh, how right. to search for specific terms. So you don't have to think so much about, you know, tags and categories, which can end up being, uh, you know, overwhelming a system pretty quickly. Um, but, but know confidently that when you search for a specific term that you would have written in the text, that you'll be able to find those notes. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, you know, for me, that's a, uh, that's a super useful thing that has freed me from the overhead uh, about thinking about categories and tags uh, or notebooks right. and tags in a way that I used to spend a lot of time thinking about. This is the same thing in email, yeah. how I just don't file email anymore. There's my inbox and there's the archive and it's just one giant archive. And I just don't file email anymore because search has replaced all of that cognitive overhead that I used to spin, spin my wheels thinking about. I just don't have to do that anymore. So a number one, learn to search and uh well i can actually post a link I'm, I'm sure there is a good video uh that somebody else has already done uh that can help us uh start that process if you if you need help i'm seeing a future tech podcast episode there might there might be there are hints of it in the ether hints shiny there hints. is because when you say that even about the email yeah. that you don't you don't put your email in categories you just archive and use the search yeah. i could do that i could actually learn from you on that because i'm still using file folders oh yeah and sticking things in there yeah but then i don't go to them i never go, go to them so anyway that's a whole nother subject but i like that i think that we should talk about that at some point. right um okay so we got to get to the practice part Right. Because a lot of times we forget to even practice that practice the strategies that we've learned. And I think that one of the things that I've seen with clients is they want to try to do everything all at once um, because they want change. I mean, you know, they want some they want this challenge or whatever it is that they're working on to, to be finished. Uh, but this is also just kind of like capturing in different places doesn't work. Trying to do too much at once doesn't work either. This is not mm -hmm. an effective solution. So we've got to eliminate that. So my suggestion is to go back to starting small and with one strategy at a time. So the worksheet that I designed was to just practice one strategy at a time. Now, 
this doesn't always have to be the case. There might be some situations or, you know, where you can work on more than one or two strategies at a time, but I'm just going to use this as a good place to start. One small strategy or start small with one strategy at a time. You know why I love that? Can I tell you? Because yeah. it it shows that we are scientifically minded. Because you know, you know what a scientist would do is change one variable and look at the impact of that change on the overall system, uh, on on your controls, right? On the things that you are are not changing. And you have to do that to be able to, when you're integrating a new process, when you're learning a new skill, you have to be able to change the one thing and see how it changes your world, see how it changes the way you interact with the world around you. If you change too much at a time, you don't know if any one thing is working or not. Really works. I love it. And that's why I ask people around me to call me scientist. Yes, I should start that. Footnote, I am not a scientist. (laughs) Me neither. (laughs) But we like to pretend we are on podcasts. (laughs) I don't. I'm not a scientist, but I play one on the podcast. (laughs) I play one on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. (laughs) Moving on. With the unscientific, the unscientific piece of this. Right. Yes. All right. So how do you decide what strategy to practice first? Because this is going to be a question that's going to come up because, again, you want to practice all of them. They all yeah. look good. Right. So what I would tell people um, is to if you don't have a toleration list, you know, you might want to think about maybe getting one. Mm-hmm. We know um, if you've listened to the show for a long time, tolerations are those little things that are kind of bugging you that you want to uh take care of. So we can look at the toleration list. We can look at, you know, what's keeping you up at night. What do you keep thinking about? Um, Choose a strategy that maybe you've tried in the past that you know worked, but you forgot about it. That's a great place to start. Yeah. Um, And consistency is not our measure of success. We've, I've said that before, and um, I certainly want to repeat that with strategies here too. I think it's important to understand that we're not looking at consistency. So even if it worked in the past and you stopped doing it, it doesn't mean that it's a bad strategy. Let's go back and review it. That's right. Um, So we will put the strategy worksheet into the show notes. um, So you guys can download that. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of go through um, with some examples of how to use this worksheet. And um, the purpose of it is to, you know, really identify what makes the strategy important. It gives you a way to track it and it gives you a way to analyze it later. So my strategy that I'm using or that I'm going to practice is I'm going to use two alarms in the morning. Okay. So this is the new strategy because I want to get out of the door on time. That's my biggest thing is I'm not leaving early enough. Right. So I'm going to try the strategy of two alarms. I'm going to set one at 30 minutes before I have to leave. And then I'm going to set another one at five minutes before I have to leave. So that's my strategy. I explained it. So what's the purpose of the strategy? I need to leave the house on time, right? That's my, that's my goal. So what makes this matter to me? Well, every day I've been late and Pete, who is my coworker, gets mad. (laughs) (laughs) He's irritated me. Well, you could, (laughs) you could be getting mad at me. Um, so the problem though is that I, you know, this bothers me, right? Because I don't want people to think differently of me. Um, and I want to show that I'm still reliable. I'm, you know, this isn't going to be an issue going forward, right? So this matters to me. My reputation, just how people view this matters to me. Right, right. All right. Okay, so now the next thing is to paint a picture of where you are now and where... uh where you want to be by using this strategy. So right now I'm feeling like I'm running around in chaos every morning. I'm stressed. And then I, there's this fear that I'm going to be forgetting something because my anxiety is sky high. Mm-hmm. I'm worried that Pete is going to actually say something to me today because he is mad, even though he pretends like he's not. Furious. <laughs> and then, uh, but where I'd like to be Where I see the future is I would like to have my mornings be more calm. I'd like to be a little bit more in control. I'd like to be able to find what I need and just have a more peaceful beginning of my day. Mm -hmm. That's really where I would like to be. 
So how am I going to know that my strategy is working? I'm not going to be late anymore. And Pete's not going to growl at me. That's true. Yeah. So what could potentially get in my way of making the strategy work? Well, it's going to be the unexpected things that are going to get in my way, especially with kids Pets. and animals in yep. the house. Kids and animals. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So these things could definitely get in my way. Um, how, what can I do to prevent these roadblocks? Quite honestly, I'm not sure. So that's how I'm answering it. I don't know. I don't know okay. how I'm going to prevent that. Uh, what can you do to make this strategy more fun and engaging? This is important for the ADD mind, right? We want to be engaged in our strategy. So what I'm going to do with this particular alarm thing that I'm trying is I'm going to use two different alarm sounds. So one's going to be, you know, at 30 minutes and one's going to be at five minutes. And then I'm going to play a game with myself to see how many days in a row I can actually show up on time. So it's like an internal game that I'm playing. Little, little so when life do I, hacking you're doing there. A little bit little of life, life, little hacking. life hacking. Yeah. All right. So when do you plan on doing this strategy? I'm going to start next Monday. But in this, you would also say, you know, I'm going to do this every morning at six or I'm going to do this. Right. Yeah, this is where you describe you in detail it. what your what your schedule strategy looks like. How am I going to remember to do it? Well, this is pretty easy because I'm my strategy is to use reminders. So I'm going to use a reminder re to remind me about my reminders in the morning. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds weird, but somehow I have to remember to do this. So right. I have to use some kind of trigger to set that alarm. Right. So maybe it's a notification on my phone or something that comes up that's going to tell right. me set your timers for 30 and five. Right. What external support do you need to find success? Right. I'm answering it saying none right now. Because this is all you. It's all me at this point. Yeah. But it right? may come down, down to needing to document uh, an ac uh, accountability partner or. You bet. Right. So software or a community member or some 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 external outside something you can't touch directly, some sort of support to help you get this done. You bet. Absolutely. It may even come uh, to me, right? You may even have to yeah. come to Pete and say, Pete, I need you to do something for me to help me so that it this is the Jerry Maguire accountability partner, right? Help me help you. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. What I love so much From about From one the first, scientist to another. A, a scientist, scientific minds <laughs> unite. Uh, yes. look, the first two pages of this all seem to me very sort of, uh, journal focused. Like we're, we're yes. going in here and we're doing some uh, very reflective and introspective and you're not uh, way I gather this. You're not doing this every day. This is not how you sit down no. and assess it. This is focusing on something you want to change. And then we get into the daily stuff. Right. And you want to practice yeah. it. Right. So okay. then there's this tracking calendar of where you can check off each time that you do the the strategy and then you can write notes about how it worked that day. Right. So that's really a nice feature, right? Because now you're you're practicing the strategy and you can write down sort of how it's going. And that only has to be like a week or so. It doesn't have to be long. And you don't even have to do it every week. I mean, every day of the week. But it's just a way for you to kind of check off that you're doing it and it and it seems to be working. Right. So then, then, the, then after you've practiced it, it becomes this analysis, right? We want to come back and, and say, okay, what did you learn this week? Well, I learned that the alarms are helpful to keep me aware of time. Mm -hmm. So I did feel like they were helpful in the sense that I was aware when it was 30 minutes and five minutes. What worked? For me, the 30 minute alarm worked because it kept me aware that I needed to speed things up a bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Like there was this, OK, I'm at kind of the last mile here. I got to speed it up a little bit. But what didn't work was the five minute alarm because that completely stressed me out and it wasn't helpful at all. Right. So that's important to know about yourself. Like, OK, well, part of it worked, but part of it didn't. Um, so it's not expecting that the way that the strategy has been taught to you is going to necessarily fit for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like that's where you're going to have to really try to manipulate it for yourself and figure out what's going to work for you because everybody's different. Uh, next question. Do I want to continue to focus on this strategy? Yes, I do because it's still very important to me and I haven't, you know, I haven't figured it out quite yet. Yeah. Uh, what changes need to be made? So what I need to do right now is I need to play around with that second timer. 
what time feels better to me so that doesn't cause more anxiety? So maybe instead of five minutes, maybe I'm going to try at 10 or 15 and see if that gives me a little bit more Mm -hmm. time. Again, how am I going to remember? I'm going to use my reminders to remind me of my strategy and I'm going to keep this worksheet out in the open because this is like a, it is like a scientific project that you are working on right now. So all of our listeners are also scientists. Yes. Look at the community of scientists that we I know. (laughs) We are all very amazing. Yes. Yes. (laughs) It is. It's true. That is true. So. That's what we need to do is we need to see, you know, see what, how is this going to work, right? I'd, I'd like to apologize to the people in our community who are actually scientists. Actual scientists, yes. yeah. We, believe me, we're on your coattails. We're on your lab coattails. Yes, we are. <laughs> and we bow down That's to right. all the work that you do in the real world. Yes. Uh, so then the last question is what's next? Are you ready to add a new strategy? For me, I wasn't yet because I really needed to get the timing right on this. This was still really important to me. Um, so I'm not going to do anything else right now, but if you are at a point where you feel like, okay, I've got this. So I'm going to put this tool in my toolbox, uh, so that I don't forget that this actually did work. And then I can kind of keep moving on to other things that I want to work on. That's perfect. And I should say, as you've been talking, what you may not know is I found that worksheet and it's been on the screen and uh, it's oh, it's lovely. And you can see as you're looking at it, like I've I've made it all fillable. So you can type in your responses in this PDF as you download it. And even all the checkboxes on the tracking calendar are all checkable. So you can you can say, hey, I, this is when I finished this thing and add your special notes. And, uh, you know, you can make it work for you there. So uh, hopefully Absolutely. that's handy for everybody. Yes. There you go. So there you go. That is the strategy. That is how to practice a strategy. One, one strategy. strategy. So you should do one of these for every strategy that you want to to take on and not all of them at the same time. Not all of them at the same time and not all strategies are going to need to be this thought out. I mean, you know, we don't need to be, you know, that scientific about everything. <laughs> Can you really be uh, too the, scientific, Nikki? Really? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm the person thinking that they have to do this every single time. But yeah. the ones that are important to you, the ones that you really want to to really pay attention to and focus on and and tweak and really make work, I think that it's va- very valuable to go through this process and um and see how it's how it's developing and then be able to put this worksheet in your binder or in your note, you know, your, you, you can scan it and, or if you're doing it on computer anyway, put it Save in your new version note. of it. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this becomes part of that capturing. What, uh, what, what sort of uh, suggestions do you have around time and integrating new uh, practices into your life? For example, say you're taking on this one, the don't make Pete mad practice strategy right yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> he's a bear and uh and then you get it and and you feel like you have a system that works for you at what point would you start introducing a new one to practice on when you're ready i mean i think that that's going to be a very individual question or i mean answer to other you know everybody's going to have a different answer mm-hmm. um some people are going to want to start right away right they feel like they've got this one down and they're going to go straight into the next one but maybe you want to keep practicing this and or maybe you want to use this same idea but instead of just for work you're going to apply it to social situations you know, to the weekend, right. like I'm late to Home, appointments whatever. a lot on the weekend. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to move it away from just getting to work on time to, you know, how do I make sure I get to the doctor's office on time? Mm-hmm. How do I make sure that I get to the party on time? Um, those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, I, 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 um, I encourage people to try strategies. I don't want them to just sit on one forever. I mean, keep trying them, but definitely give yourself a lot of grace. Um, and remember that your ADHD is there. It's going to get in your way um, and accept that and be okay with that and just keep moving forward. Like it's, it doesn't have to, it, it, it doesn't mean the strategy didn't work. It doesn't mean that you're not working it. You know, you got to just 
I think the acceptance around the ADHD part has to be well, there yeah. as well. And, and there'll be a time where it just gets easier to do this thing, right? And mm-hmm. there'll be a time where you're doing it because it's ingrained into your routine and not because you have this the the schedule out in front of you and you're you're tracking it every day, right? And and right. I think that's when you feel like because the the greatest challenge that you have with this, I I feel like I've experienced is that when you do something and you feel like you've got it every day, uh, but it's still kind of work and you introduce something new, it's way too easy to forget the thing that you just practiced, right? It's way too easy to supplant one new thing with another new thing uh, if you do it too soon. That's that's Mm -hmm. my personal challenge. And uh, Mm -hmm. but, you know, my my I, I suspect that I'm not alone. Oh, I'm sure you're not alone. Uh, the other thing I was thinking too, a good, a, a good area of where you could use this worksheet is like, say you have a, um, an evaluation, you know, mm-hmm. from your boss or if you have like 360 reviews and they're coming from everywhere. And if you notice that there's a pattern, you know, um, of maybe communication, like that, that they, um, you know, they want you to be more clear or, uh, I don't know, something about communication. Then you could zero in on a couple, you know, on a, a, on a communication strategy. So you can research it a little bit. You can figure out like, you know, what, what, where do I need help? And what am I doing good? Cause we never want to forget that. Mm-hmm. What are my strengths? And then how could you, um, practice something that's fairly new to you, right? Because we do talk about time management a lot. People know to use alarms, Mm -hmm. uh, but people don't necessarily know how to work on their communication because that's not, you know, spoken as much Um, or memory. We don't talk about memory as much as we do about organizing and all that stuff. So I, I think that something like that could be this, this worksheet could be very helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's super useful and and a a great way to kind of expand your uh, bag of tricks in different contexts, especially work. It will make you look good. Uh, to come you in bet. with something yeah. like this. That's that's really yeah. great. Uh, great conversation, Nikki. Great tool. And we will put that in the show notes. We'll also make sure to drop that link in the Discord community so people can grab it directly. Uh, no hoops. No hoops. If you are a patron at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast, there are no more hoops. There's just no hoops. You are hoopless. You're, you're a hoopless. I think it's already in Discord, actually. A hoopless actually. scientist. Wandering. Yes. If you're at the... You're like it, Kung it, Fu. It, yeah. 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 This You're a scientist. Thank you, everybody, for, <laughs> for downloading and uh, listening to the show. We sure appreciate your time and your attention. Uh, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next time right here on Taking Control, the ADHD Podcast.